All right, let's go. Let's go. All right, if you all put up your laptops, the first, I'm just kidding, all right. Bad teacher joke, okay, fine. See, that's how much my, my students in my classes laugh too, but that's fine. It's five o'clock, come on, loosen up, y'all, it's fine. There you go, see, nice, fake laugh, I appreciate that. That's great. See, also, uh, fake laugh, I love it. My name is Professor Mark Sheriff. Welcome to the Computer Science BS Info Session. Thank you so much for coming. Hopefully we can answer all of your questions while we are here in the span of 90 minutes, but that probably won't happen um, because sometimes there's just a lot of questions. That's because we got a lot to talk about and there's a lot of things that you wanna know. I wanna make sure that you not only have the information that you need right now, as much as you need, particularly thinking about the fact that registration's next week and some of you are gonna be trying to register for CS classes, you need to know what to register for, but also where else to go. So very quickly, like I said, I'm Mark Sheriff. I am the director of the Bachelor of Science program in Computer Science. Um, I am one of the associate chairs of the department along with, uh, for instance, the other person you might run into is Professor Tom Horton, who's not here tonight. He is the director of the Bachelor of Arts program. Uh, also, uh, a member of our wonderful student support staff, SJ, who is our, uh, our advising coordinator, so sometimes uh, you will uh, run into her in various places. And also we have a, a, a friend from Career Services. Dana, just put a name to the face. Um, resources that you should definitely take advantage of um, while you're here at UVA. So, I'm gonna go through, honestly, I'm gonna go through just like 15 or so slides on what it's like in CS, why I think computing is awesome, what it's like to be in this major, what you can do with this major, but I wanna make sure we get to your questions because you probably came here with things that you want to know about. If you want to play along at home, the link to the deck is right here down here, bscsinfo.uvacs.org. I'm also recording this presentation and we'll make it available to you later. So. Why CS? I mean, I'm biased. I've been, obviously been in computer science for a while now, but I think it's wonderful. And I don't even really code, and you know, I'm a teacher. And part of that that I'm trying to get at is computer science can lead you a lot of different places. Five of the top six future jobs involve computing, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. Over the next 10 years, there'll be more job openings for students in computing than all the other STEM majors combined. Now does that mean that I don't want people to go into chemical engineering or systems or anything like that? Of course not. I want people to follow their passion and do what they're excited about. But gosh darn it, we need more computing people. Uh, we just do. Um, there are always job op openings. There are always opportunities, whether it's something that you might end up at a place like, you know, an Apple or a Google or a Microsoft or something like that, but also there are Nonprofits that need software to help them manage donations. There are schools that need software to help them um, handle education technologies. There are libraries that need computer scientists to help them manage collections. There are finance people who need uh, people who can do data analysis and machine learning to do predictions. Computing can take you so many different places. And the thing I definitely want you to know, leaving this room is, a computer science major is not always going to be someone <laughs> just sitting down coding. Computing is more about people than it is about coding. And that's why we usually use the term software architect. Software engineer, software architect, not programmer. Because really when we're thinking about how do we build software, it's about understanding people's needs. What do they need? What problem do they have? What challenge is there to overcome? And then how can we apply computing ideas, computing technologies, computing algorithms to solve those problems? Why are there so many opportunities? Computing is everywhere. It is ubiquitous. I mean, just look around this room. Think about just the things you have in your pocket, in your backpack, in your purse. Computing runs so many different things whether it be as powerful as my MacBook, which admittedly is not as powerful as some of your MacBooks, my smartwatch, 
Someone in here might have, for instance, an insulin pump that has an embedded chip in it that's monitoring how much insulin's being uh, uh, supplied. So many different ways you can go. Computing prepares you for helping others to solve problems. Here's some quotes from other computing majors when we ask them, why did you get into computing? What do you think is something we should tell potential majors? I know a lot of CS kids, which is funny that they you know, use the term kids back and forth, okay. US CS kids, they go into finance and consulting because we have an amazing mind for critical thinking and breaking down problems. How many of you are in 1110 or 1111 right now, or 1112, any of the CS1 courses? You've probably done this, right? They've talked about how do you take a big problem and break it down into smaller problems? And that's how you attack some of those programs. Emphasize the fact that CS gives you a degree to work in an unlimited number of industries. No other department in the e-school gives their students the opportunity to learn about so many different topics. If you look at our course offerings in any given semester, we offer more diverse electives than any of the other departments. Part of it is the way that our degree is set up versus the other. I'm not throwing shade at them. It's just there's different ways that degrees have to be set up. But ours has that ability to be so broad. In your fourth year, in your third year, you could be taking a course on crypt uh, cryptocurrency, come over to my course in game design, go to another course in machine learning, and go to a yet another course in cloud computing. That could be a semester. It'd be a hard semester, but you, I mean, it could be one. Some of the research we're doing is incredible. I'm working with Professor X. I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that we have Professor Charles Xavier on staff. I think they just, the, the quote was anonymized. Um, to do research and graphics, some cool ideas, really, uh, he's really good about relating complicated ideas. We want our students to get involved in undergraduate research. We have a, a website, ugresearch.cs.virginia.edu, that lists projects that faculty are actively recruiting for. And these projects can turn into a capstone, they can turn into a research paper, they could turn in a, into a gateway to going to grad school. Here are some key strengths that we, we cherish in our department. We believe and we know that students that come out of our department are highly sought after. We firmly believe this. We have the data to show it. We have outstanding undergraduate research opportunities. We continue to hire awesome people into our department to teach some just incredible courses. Um, we have these cross-cutting initiatives, like the Link Lab, if you've ever attempted to go to the top floor of Olson Hall, um, where the Autonomous Racing Lab is. Yeah, that's partially us. I mean, Link Lab is cool because it's a bunch of departments, but the guy who runs it is a CS faculty person. We have uh, groups in cyber innovation, and as I mentioned, autonomous racing. Our faculty are doing amazing research and are being uh, recognized around the globe. Here are just some of our strengths that we feel. And there are things that are not listed here that you might think, oh, computer science, you should probably be able to do X. Like, can't you do, for instance, graphics isn't up here anymore. It turns out that our, you know, um, as faculty come and go, our focus has, shift, has shifted. That was a slightly older quote. And so now we're doing more things in cybersecurity and cryptography more things in cyber physical sy systems and Internet of Things, more things in computer science education. How do we best teach computing to students? College level, K-12 level. It's no secret we're huge. Um, and I know that that can be a little scary because some of our classes, okay, all of our classes are kind of big. But this is what it's been looked like. Over the past 10 years, the number of undergraduate degrees awarded has increased by 17.5%. Last year, we awarded almost 500 uh, undergraduate degrees across the three degree programs that we have. We taught 31,491 undergraduate student credit hours. So the way you calculate that number is you take the enrollment of a class, like 1110, which is worth three credits, and you take the enrollment and multiply it times three. That's the student credit hours. And we just became, uh, as, of, as of last year, we became the largest, con we're the largest degree granting unit on grants. We passed McIntyre, which is kind of terrifying in some level, but also super exciting. As of right now, we have 1,800 declared majors and minors. 
to put this in perspective, the undergraduate population of UVA is just shy of 18,000. One tenth of the student body is a CS major. I know, weird, huh? Here's the actual numbers in case you're curious. You can see how things, how, how things stand right now and how the, the classes are at, every, at any given year and how overall a number of majors has grown. You can come back and look at these numbers later if you like. We believe that b because of our diverse, because of our different degree programs, the BS and the BA and the CPE, and because of the way that we run our classes, we believe that we are actually doing pretty, pretty well, both in C's and nationally, as far as um, underrepresented groups in computer science. Um, for specifically women, um, you can see the percentages here, and the Talby report is a, is a national report that is done by computer science departments to kind of just get a lay of the land, what is everyone doing? And the total number was 22.3%, and we were at 29%. And specifically our BA is even higher at 38.9%. But we're still doing pretty well. As a matter of fact, we were recognized by the Chronicle of Higher Education as the sixth best four-year public university as far as women in computing. Other uh, underrepresented groups, um, uh, uh, we have, you can see how we are doing uh, better than average, I suppose, in diversity for some categories against uh, the, the Talby report and also the college, but we recognize that we have more work to do. And that is something we take very seriously in our department. Uh, we, want, we want everyone to know that computing is for everyone. It is impossible to build good software. It is impossible to be a good problem solver if you do not have a diverse representative group of engineers working on those solutions. It's as simple as that. And we want to keep improving in our department. There are a ton of groups and clubs that you can get involved in in computer science. I've listed a very small number up here. There are two links right here and here, which again, Go to the easy link, bscsinfo.uvacs.org, and then you can get to those links. The ACM, the Association for Computing Machinery, has a table right outside if you're interested in talking to them on the way out. They do all sorts of fun, fun things, including helping with resumes, helping with uh, class registration, what courses should you take, but they also do a lot of social events as well. Student game developers, does exactly what it sounds like. Um, oh, I should point out that ACM um, also sponsors our collegiate programming team, which has gone to Worlds several times in the past decade. Um, they also run our high school programming contest. Students in our department are very, very active, and they want to be active, and they want to be giving back, and it's fantastic. Um, I have some information here from um, our folks at Career Development, Career Services, um, which, uh, if, if would like to chime in at any point, please, please do so. This is some information that we had. It's part of our accreditation for last year. And this is part of the survey that was given at the very, uh, um, at the very end for the class of 2021. And we can see here that 74% um, uh, were working at that time. 14% had said that they had already gone on to um, uh, continue their education in, in the graduate programs. And then 12% were still weighing their options. Um, I do not have a follow-up on that 12%, but um, anecdotally, it's typically people who are deciding between offers at a given point, and they're still trying to figure out what they wanted to do, or they're taking a year off or something like that. It's not for a lack of opportunities. Here's where we are sending folks as of 2021. Amazon was our number one hirer, I guess, in 2021. We send a lot of folks back over to Richmond to go to Capital One. Um, uh, Capital One is also part of our industrial advisory board, and so they are, uh, provide us a lot of feedback on what we are doing in our, in, in our courses. Microsoft, Appian, Google, IBM, and you, you can kind of see the, the standard list of places that you might expect, but also places that you might not necessarily think of. You know, CarMax, Fannie Mae, Accenture, Booz Allen, Willow Tree is a very large mobile app developer here in Charlottesville. 
and they hire a bunch of our a bunch of our students. And the numbers that I was given today, average salary for the BA and the BS, just north of 100K, which is above the C's average. Um, they, if they wanted to reach out to career services, what sort of things do y'all help them with there? One of the best things you can do is come to our drop-in hours if that works for you, or you can schedule an appointment if those hours don't fit. Um, and appointments are scheduled through through Handshake. So hopefully you're all familiar with Handshake. So um, we're happy to talk with you wherever wherever you are in the process, whether you don't have a resume or you know, don't even have anything started, or you want to get an eye on your latest position. We can work with you um, all through the process. Fantastic. Thank you. And it seems like the battery on the mic pack died right before I got up here, of course. But if you have any questions about that, we could certainly get you in touch with Career Services about reaching out to them for help with resumes or working through Handshake for internship opportunities and, uh, and opportunities like that. Over in Thornton A Wing, if you are looking for Career Services. Fantastic. People are li listening back to it. It's going to sound like I'm swinging from the trees. This is the BSCS checklist. Okay. We have, let's say, a lot of copies down here that you're welcome to take one eventually. If you would like to look at the digital version of this, you can go to BSCS checklist. Dot uvacs.org, and you will get the Google Doc version of this. Okay? This lays out for you not only the required courses, it also has an example schedule, and also has the um, prerequisite chart, which I will talk about in just a minute. If you are curious about the differences between the two degrees, the BSCS and the BACS. Our, we do our best now to bring, have bring them together as effectively as similar as they can be because they are all, you're all computing students. We want the, I cannot tell the difference between a BA major and a BS major in any of the classes that I teach. It's not like, oh, well, I need to do something else for the BA majors. No, 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 no. It really is that they are, guys, could you take it from like a seven down to like a two at least? Awesome, thank you. I am super easily distracted. As noted. All right, so the BA major and the BS major, we brought them closer together through this new thing we call the foundation courses. So you've probably heard some older CS majors say like, oh, I'm on the old curriculum. You're only gonna be in the new curriculum. Well, yeah, that, that's it. That's the new curriculum. Um, we're pretty proud of it. We literally started working on it in 2014. We're finally getting it fully rolled out. And so this is now what you are taking. But the difference between the two the BSCS major must take advanced software development, 3240, which is my class, um, which is how do you build software in a, in a team. There's a capstone, five CS electives, and then all the good, crunchy, wonderful C's, math, and stuff, which I know everyone's very excited about. But yeah, they're still there. Um, although I will say we are, we are in the midst of trying to um, provide other options for Physics 2 in computer science um, because Physics 2 isn't as needed for CS as it is for some of the other degrees. So we are working on that. That will be the next change if something does happen. The BA, BA majors take something called integration electives. So those are computing courses that are outside of the e-school. Let me answer probably the number one question, which is, okay, I already was gonna be a CS major when I came in here. I just need you to tell me, Sheriff, what am I supposed to sign up for next semester? Because my advisor has no idea what I'm supposed to do. Cool, here's what your answer is. 
If you have not passed a CS1 class, that's 1110, 1111, or 1112, you should sign up for a CS1 class next semester. Probably 1110 or 1111, since 1112 will not be offered next semester. It will be the following fall. But as an engineering major, you need to get through CS1 your first year, okay? If you haven't, don't have you know, AP credit or something. After that, you should be targeting CS2100, which is DSA1, CS2120, which is DMT1, and CS2130, which is CSO1. How many of you are right now in um, uh, uh, DSA1? Fair number of you are in DSA1, okay? How many of you are in DMT1? Okay, a few of you in there. Is anyone in CSO right now? Okay, a handful. Okay, great. Those of you that are not in 2100, you're taking 2100 next semester. You can take 2130 and or 2120. We built the curriculum such that it is good to take DSA-1 and CSO-1 together. Is it required? No. If you're going to take them not in the same semester, take DSA-1 first. CSO-1 requires some stuff from DSA-1, but it's not till the end of the semester when you need it in CSO-1, okay? So some students will do the entire 2000 level in one semester. That is fine. If you would like to do that, you can do that. Otherwise, you should do some combination of 2100 and 2120 or 2100 and 2130. Let's say you have taken 2100. If you have completed 2100, you should be targeting SDE 3140. 3140 uh, basically unlocks a lot of electives, okay? So you need 3140 to, uh, to get to the higher level courses, okay? Also, if you've had 2100, the next most important course you can have for your Leet Code interviews that you might have is 3100. Once you have completed 21 and 2100 and 2120, you can do 3100, DSA 2, okay? Um, is anyone 3140? Yeah, that would have been, that would have been, I mean, it wouldn't be crazy, but uh, it would have been fine. So those are your targets, okay? If you have not taken CS1, do that first. Otherwise, you're looking at some combination of 2100, 2120, 2100, 2130, or all three, if you have 2100, by all means, get into SDE. If you have these two, by all means, go to CS3100. Now, there are other things we, of course, require. We require things like, you know, your math science elective and your 2000 level STS course and uh, ATMA. You know, got to take probability, got to take, most people take linear algebra. But um, you can fill those in as you go but you really need to start chipping away at that base level of the foundation because then you can move forward. Here's how registration works for our courses. Up until this semester, we actually had locks on the classes that said you had to be a declared major in order to register for CS courses. We are no longer doing that. So good for y'all. You, you're the first batch to not have to deal with this craziness. But we are hard enforcing prerequisites, okay? If you, have if you only have CS2100 and you try to sign up for my game design class next semester, you will not get in. CIS will not even let you try, okay? Because CIS is now doing, well, it's CIS. So let's just say it's doing its best to, to make sure the prerequisites are being managed. And when CIS does CIS things, um, we will actually do manual checks at the beginning of the semester to uh, verify that you have the prerequisites needed for the courses. We're not doing this to be mean. We're doing this because we have data to show that when you take a course without the appropriate prerequisite, you do worse. And once you do worse in the later course, you start falling further behind. So it is in your best interest to make sure you're following the prerequisite chain properly. So bear that in mind, okay? We will drop you from a class if you somehow sneak in. You somehow like, hey, professor, don't you want to sign my course action form? Like, you don't even show them the form. You're like, oh, come on, sign it. Yeah, yeah, that, no. No, we don't do that. 
I said about 30 minutes. I did pretty good, 27. Here's where you can go if you have questions. You can reach me at bscsdirector at virginia.edu or just sheriff at virginia.edu. Sheriff has two R's in it. I know, I'm weird. Student support, you can reach SJ and the rest of the awesome student support staff by just emailing cs-office. If some of you in here are in the college and wanted to join us, which is great, welcome. Uh, or maybe you're an engineering student and you heard the words physics and you're like, huh, how do I switch over to the college and do the BA? Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Uh, there's the BACS director. And also, maybe you, you decide, you know, maybe computing isn't for you. Maybe CS, the major, isn't for you. Maybe you went to the mechanical engineering and you heard Gavin Garner talk about mechatronics and you're like, oh, that's awesome. And I want to do a CS minor. That's, all, that's fantastic. Gavin's a great guy. So, you know, do that. That's great. Will McBurney is our minor coordinator. So he's who you talk to about that. The BSCS checklist, we have physical copies down here that you can take with you when, when we're done or when you're you know, on your way. Oh, chinkies, how many did you print? Like 11,000? Um, but there's the digital version. And again, I saw lots of you taking shots of the slides. That's flattering. There's a link and you can have it like on your computer, mm -hmm. but that's up to you. So this time is yours. Um, I hope you came with questions. If you didn't, okay. But uh, I will answer any and all questions that you have. Who wants to be first? Yes, sir. What I recommend holding off on taking physics too. Honestly, the, the, the good BSCS director answer here is you should never delay your degree progress on a chance. Um, that said, the course is ECE 2502, being taught by Keith Williams next semester. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, Keith Williams is, I mean, I mean, come on. Come on, it's Keith Williams. Um, but, but, I will say that there, we are in, let's just call it negotiations with the curriculum committees as to how many students can get in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But any BSCS major that has that course, asterisk, it will count. If it doesn't count for physics two for some wild reason, uh, it will count as like a math science elective. So, you know, signing up for that course is not a bad idea. In the back, yes, sir. Great, so the question is, are there different opportunities for people between the BACS and the BSCS? The honest answer to that question, we asked our industry partners, do you care? And resoundingly, the answer is no. They do not care if you have a BA or a BS. What they care is this, did you graduate and get a degree? Okay, that makes sense. But the second part is, what classes did you take and how did you do? So what they are looking for is, hey, oh, oh you, did you finish BA, BS, yeah, whatever. I need someone who, who's had courses in machine learning and databases and cloud. That's what they care about. That said, we do see different, so the students who come into engineering and then do the BS major tend to lean more towards the tech heavy jobs like a Microsoft or things like that. And the BA majors tend to lean to do things more like startups and working with nonprofits and things like that. And that's not a function of the degree, it's a function of students coming into UVA with different career and life goals. And sometimes that just leads them to different schools. Um, but no, at the end of the day, a, CS, a computing degree is a computing degree. Same for our computer engineering friends. Uh, the CPE degree, those folks get very similar jobs to the BA and BS majors. Maybe a few more Intel, I guess, but otherwise not so much. Yes? So how, the question is, is, how does research projects get counted for credit? In our degree program, you can count up to three credits of independent research as CS elective credit under the number 4993. 
if the faculty member has dual appointment with the CS department and the School of Data Science, for instance, and we have several of those, then that faculty member could just register you for CS4993 and then all hunky-dory, it goes great. If that course, if that research experience is not significant enough to be counted as a CS elective, and that is very hand wavy, it's up to the faculty member, you get CS2993 and it counts as an unrestricted elective. Now, it gets a little trickier if there's no official tie between CS and the other department. So let's say School of Medicine. We don't really have many ties to the School of Medicine. The way this typically works is the faculty member in the School of Medicine would reach out to a CS faculty member that they know or is doing similar research and say, hey, will you be the proxy for me in order to sign this student up for credit? So there's ways to do it, and it really is dependent on what school it is, who the faculty member is, um, but that's the basics. Uh, three credits towards CS elective under number 4993, or you could use it to, towards your um, STS senior thesis under 4980. Yes? What was, what's the most useful what? What's the most useful minors for a CS major? Ooh, I love this question. I love it because the answer is none. <laughs> and here's why I say this. Okay, a minor. Okay, a minor is an arbitrary set of six classes that some group of people just came up with to say we should have a minor. Um, exactly one person will care if you finish your minor, and that person probably is you. Um, and this sounds really mean. But, but, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You are only at UVA for four years, okay? And if you're a transfer, it's less than that. My firm belief is that it is much more about the courses you take and the story you want to tell about what you are interested in more than checking off just a particular minor. So let's say, for instance, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question straight this time. We see a lot of students with like a minor in statistics who want to do something data science-y, okay? I'll use that as an example, or a data science minor for that matter. Um, four of the courses, let's say four of the courses are really relevant to what you want to do. And you do really well in those courses, that's great. You have two courses left to finish the minor. Is it better to take two minor courses that will have no bearing whatsoever on what you want to do in your life, or go take two courses over in statistics department, which actually influences what you want to do, but doesn't count toward the minor? I, I think, I think you, people can be much more strategic about what they want to do than just saying, oh, I want to get a minor in this. That's my opinion. That said, a lot of people will do data science now, a lot of people do statistics. Um, that's, those are the, uh, the languages. We'll see lots of minors in languages. Spanish, French, German. Um, Hmm? Python. Minor in Python, yeah, I speak, I speak parcel tongue. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but there you go. So, so my, my, my suggestion to you, my friend, is um, think about where you want your career to go and think about where those courses live. And if those courses are broad across the university, take advantage of that. There's so much cool stuff going on at UVA. Great question, thank you for that. Other questions, yes ma'am. Say that one more time. Is it a STEM major? Yes. Um, so <laughs> this is weird. Um, um, not your question. Not your question. The question is not weird. The, the thing that's weird in, when the question is, is, is the BA major a STEM major? The old BA major, the old curriculum BA major, was called an interdisciplinary major. And at UVA, interdisciplinary majors fall under a weird set of rules of like, you can take some courses from here, from courses from here, and kind of build it yourself. And when you do that, there's so many different things that could happen that the, the CHEV, the State Council on Higher Education in Virginia, doesn't, didn't classify our old BA major as STEM because it was under this um, huge umbrella of interdisciplinary, which is just kind of weird. But our BA major, the new, the new one, the fully realized new BA major, they do recognize. So both officially and actually, yes, it's a STEM major. 
Other questions? Yes, sir. Sure. So how does prior experience or other experiences in general factor into your degree program here? Let's say I, I teach game design. I've said it a couple times. I teach video game design. Student comes to me and says, I had an internship at Blizzard. Can I have your class? I'd be like, yeah, that sounds fine. That's <laughs> <laughs> that seems like, seems like you might be okay if you didn't have the exact class that you needed, but you had, I can waive that prerequisite, okay? A, fa a, a faculty member can always waive a prerequisite. We don't suggest they do it, except in certain circumstances, but it can happen. As far as how does it play in with industry experience, so the Blizzard, the, the student who worked at Blizzard comes and says, can I have credit for game design because I worked at Blizzard? And the answer is no. And the reason for that, it, partially the reason for that is accreditation. We need to be able to say that a student who graduates from our department, a CS faculty member can vouch for the work that they have done. And if you do work at a place, Blizzard, Cap One, Willow Tree, wherever, that's awesome. We want you to do that. But if the faculty member is not the one like overseeing it, for accreditation reasons, we can't give you credit for it. And I know that's, it's kind of different at some other places where you can get credit for co-ops, but it doesn't work that way here, unfortunately. Or fortunately, in my, it's harder to deal with it. Yeah? Sure. What does the capstone project in CS look like? <laughs> uh, there is a non-zero chance it will be slightly different by the time you get to it. I'll put that ca uh, caveat on it because the old way that we did the capstone was, it was you did a service learning project. You built a piece of software for a nonprofit in Charlottesville. COVID hit. They did not want to, they didn't want to work with us. I mean, you know, there were, it was COVID. Like crazy things were going on anyway. So we had to kind of pivot. So right now, the option for our capstone is this. You either do independent research, like the gentleman asked over here, 4980. You do independent research and you write a paper. Three credits. It can be any project you want, as long as a faculty member agrees to it. And I've seen some wild projects. Um, like I have one person right now, this isn't wild. I have one per person right now who's doing theirs on um, the effect of the curriculum change. It's more of a CS education project than it is computer science. So 4980 could be anything. You could come with the project, the faculty member could have it, whatever. The other option is you take a sixth CS elective and you write your um, senior thesis paper on either the synthesis of CS electives, like how does machine learning impact AI, or you talk about how your course is impacted like an internship, or you, something like that that you did. Um, it is, our capstone is much less regimented than it is in the other degree programs in C's. Again, somewhat because of accreditation rules. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. It really, it, it, at the end of the day, what ends up happening is, I'd say two thirds of our students take a sixth CS elective and write a paper. <laughs> There's just other things you could possibly do. Yes? The uh, question is, are there any concentrations within the major? The primary concentration we have right now is the cybersecurity focal path. So we uh, are an NSA, stamp of approval department for teaching cybersecurity, um, and you get a certificate saying you complete our cybersecurity path. We have toyed with creating focal paths in um, crypto and security. Uh, sorry, that was the one we have. <laughs> that was silly. I meant to say software engineering. Uh, I apologize. Um, and we have also toyed with uh, machine learning but they are still in the kind of inception stages. Is it possible that they will be in, enacted by the time you graduate? Yes, it's possible, but they are still in the planning stages. But cybersecurity is our primary one that we have. And it's not required. You don't have to do a focal path. Let's see if there's someone, any other questions before I get repeats? Yep. What do the prerequisites look like for grad level classes? Um, It varies, is the honest answer. Um, 
if you wanted to graduate algorithms, you, you would obviously need like CS3100 from us, from the, from the undergraduate program. But some of the graduate courses, things like, um, um, what's Vincott's course called? Um, I'm sorry? Hardware, hardware, yeah, hardware security. I believe, you know, he was looking, he, he wasn't requiring a ton of specific stuff for that one. Um, it really is up to the graduate program, the, the, the graduate instructor. And the reason I say it's, it's very varied is because a student can come into a graduate program without necessarily having a CS degree. Like they might have a CPE degree, they might have an EE degree. And so it, the, the prerequisites are a lot more customized. It's a good question. Yes, sir. Uh, the program for getting a master's in five years. We operate under the UVX, U, UVA Accelerate, UV Accelerate. I don't, I don't know if there's two A's in that or not. Um, the UVA Accelerate program, um, you register for it, you apply to it. Um, the faculty member that's in charge of that is Professor Felix Lin. Um, you cannot count any uh, graduate courses. You, well, hang on. If you take graduate courses as an undergraduate and you count the graduate course towards your undergraduate degree, it cannot count towards your graduate degree. But if you finished all your undergraduate requirements and then you start taking the graduate courses, you can start rolling them over. Um, and so I signed, gosh, I signed five or six forms just yesterday for some of my advisees who are in the program who are going to start taking graduate courses. To sign up for graduate courses does require a paper form, I mean, it's DocuSign, but it requires like an actual signature but it's not hard. Yep. Great question. So the question is, DSA-1 is up there on the list with, some, with an extra dotted dashed arrow there. Why is that arrow there? Okay, so we actually piloted all of the foundation courses. For two years, we had students take DSA-1, CSO-1, SDE as we, we tried them out and then made refinements on them. When we interviewed these students after we ran it, I mean, the response was very, very, very direct. They said, we really liked taking DSA-1 and CSO-1 at the same time. They said it was really nice because the two courses had the ability to bounce off each other back and forth. However, because of things like transfer rules from the community college or other schools, we can't mandate that they are taken at the same time because someone could come in with one but not the other. So the rule is either you take them concurrently or you take 2100 first because 2100 has stuff that is needed in 2130. It's not a hard prerequisite because honestly, if you did the computer science A test, you would probably be fine in CSO1 you would have done enough Java, enough basic class stuff that you, you'd be okay in CSO1. Um, but if you haven't, that's what that line means. Yes, ma'am. Are there any CS courses that only the BA students can take or the BS students can take? Absolutely not. We treat all of our computing majors exactly the same. I love all of my computing majors all of the same, especially ones that come to class. <laughs> what else? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Say it one more time. How many? Oh, what percentage breakdown are our majors? Um, right now, we are roughly 250 BA majors a year and roughly 250 BS majors a year. Um, the, BA, the BA degree grew exceptionally rapidly. In my very first year that I taught here in 2007, um, there, we graduated, I think, five BA majors. And then a few years later, it was 10, a few years later, it was 20, and then it just kind of kept, kept on going. Ever since we removed the caps, um, the numbers have continued to increase. 
One thing that you might, I, I don't know if you worry about this or not, but you might look at our courses and say, oh my God, those, those, the, the numbers are really big. Is it, is it really bad? Will I not get to know any of my professors or anything like that? Um, it really is up to you. Um, are there students that I know just because they are in my class? As in, they, it's not like I've done research with them. It's not there, like my TAs. Yes, there are. Students who, have, who come to my class, who engage with me, who come to my office hours and talk to me, go talk to your professors. I promise, we're not all mean, just some of us, but not all of us, I promise. Um, and I am happy to write recommendation letters for these students. Uh, students um, who, who come regularly to, to like my 3240 class, I've already started talking to them like, hey, I see you're engaged, why don't you be a TA for me? We hire, we hire, like, I think it's around 250 undergraduate TAs in our department every semester. 250. And this is for running all of our classes. And without exception, I would rather have an undergraduate TA for my course than a graduate TA. Nothing against the graduate TAs, but a student who's had 3240 with me, who's had game design with me, who knows how I operate, knows how the course runs, knows what the software packages are. It just works out great. And we give our TAs a lot of freedom. We give them a lot of responsibility too. I mean, I know you've engaged with some and, and you probably have thought, well, that TA was great. And there's probably some you're like, well, that TA wasn't amazing. Maybe, maybe that's your calling. Maybe come be a TA for us. We have a TA training course, as a matter of fact. If you decide you want to be a TA, we have a one credit class on CS pedagogy. We learn not only what is it like to teach CS courses, but also things like, how do you handle a student that's crying? <laughs> that happens on occasion, maybe. Um, so we, we, don't, we don't toss you to the wolves. We want to make sure you succeed. Um, we have guest lecturers from these companies come and talk on our courses. We have active participation from Capital One, from Amazon, from Microsoft, from Willow Tree. We, we try to make sure that our students are getting in front of these, these opportunities that we want them to, to, to flourish in. Um, I really, you know, I, this is my 16th year teaching here. And it still amazes me how awesome CS students are. One semester, so this is a software engineering class, and I decided I wanted to do something completely random. I wanted the, the cool project. So I went out and got the money to buy Lego robot kits. And you're like, okay, yeah, Lego robots. Yeah, sure, sure, that's fine. Okay, yeah, whatever. Then I said, okay, I want you to build a robot, and then I want you to be able to control it with a Wii remote. And the student said, how do we do that? And I said, I have no idea, I just made that up. Go figure it out. And they're like, I hate you, Sheriff. And I was like, yes. And they did it, and it was awesome. And we can do things like that. We can do challenging things. The CS students rise to the occasion. And I love seeing what, what comes out of the classes. I love seeing the games that come out of the game design class. I love seeing the Django projects that come out of my software engineering class. So we have fun. I know my students who come and who engage. Are there students that I have literally seen only two times this entire semester? Yes. I have no idea who they are. So if you don't engage in your department, you're not going to get as much out of it. But if you do, we have a lot of fun. I think. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So in order to be a CA for a class, do you have to take the credit as a prerequisite? Not as a prerequisite. We have you take the class in your first semester as a TA. So like if, like, let's say you're in 1110, I'm speaking of course. Say you're in 1110 right now and you're like, hey, I really want to work with Ray Pettit because Ray Pettit is my jam. He's a good guy. Um, and he hires you. So then in the spring, you would take that one credit class while being a TA. And the class just kind of meets randomly. It, it, the, the work is like a two-page paper at the end of like, how did you learn? I mean, it's not, it's not like a major load. Is it pass-fail? No, you get a grade. 
And it's usually, it, the grade is assigned by the person you are TAing for. So basically, did this person do a good job being a TA? Do you have a question still? Professor Hot, we have so many cool, so many great people in our department. We really do. Prof How many of you have Professor Hot, Robbie Hot? Which Professor Hot does sound really awkward to say over and over again, in my opinion. Just like Professor Sheriff sounds like it should be a bad show on Lifetime. Um, but you know, Hot is amazing. Um, How many of you have Brunel? Does anyone have Brunel? Brunel is great. How about or Orico? Elizabeth is great. Ray Pettit already sung his praises. Derek Stone is great. I don't know who else, who else y'all have right now. But yeah, Robbie's great. And now we wear the same type of mask. Your, your style is so similar to Yeah, yeah, he's good. What other questions do you have? And by the way, by the way, as you can notice, it's not like I'm taking attendance, and it's not like there's a quiz coming up. So if you're like, I got the information I need, I'm going to go hit roots or whatever, it's fine. Just, you know, if you don't mind keeping it down if you're in the room. Um, but I want to make sure I keep answering your questions. Please come get a handout if you, if you want to get a physical copy of the, of the checklist. Yes, sir. DMT1. What's your other courses? What are your other courses? I'd do, I would do I'd do CSO1 and then the next semester do SDE and DMT. That's my, that's what I would do. It's up to you. I think either one is a fine option. So maybe even see what your friends are doing. Go about applying for a TA position. So, for like the intro course. Um, I'm going to send out the form. Is it like via email? Yes. Okay. It'll come out by, by email. Yep. Okay. Cool. And yep. Would that be like like relatively like? When I get to it. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm like right, I, sure. I'm just behind. I'm just behind. All right. Thank you. Those of you, hang on. Those of you who want to ask me questions, I'm going to get out of the way and go down there. Oh, fine. Excuse me, sorry. All right, those of you that are listening to this recording, if you have any, oh, I just ran into a chair. If you're listening to this recording, let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, cool, go CS, CS is awesome. <laughs>